hello students welcome back to my channel in this video i am going to share in brief about the environmental chemistry part 2 related to acid and diploma initially moving to the air pollution it can be defined as the presence of excessive unwanted substances in the air that adversely affect the quality of the air thereby causing damage to human beings animals and plants so initially one should know what is the composition of air air consists of especially three types of components one is major component second one is minor components and the third one is tracer components major components include oxygen nitrogen water vapor minor components include carbon dioxide and argon Tracer components include helium, neon, krypton, xenon, hydrogen, oxides of sulfur, etc. So, from this composition of air, it is very clear that if there is any change in this composition due to the presence of other substances, then that is called as the air pollution and definitely it affects the human beings, animals and plants. So, what is the inert gas present in the air with the highest concentration that is organ so let us move on to the classification of air pollutants air pollutants can be classified in different ways so based on the origin all the air pollutants can be classified into two types one is primary pollutants other one is secondary pollutants Primary pollutants means they are directly liberated from the identifiable source. Examples include carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, methane, chlorofluorocarbons. When we consider thermal power plant, it contributes towards the emission of sulfur dioxide. Coming to the second category of air pollutants that is called as secondary pollutants. Secondary pollutants include pan photochemical smog. So, these secondary pollutants are formed due to the chemical reaction of primary pollutants. So, secondary pollutants are formed due to the chemical reaction of primary pollutants. So, let us see how a photochemical smog will be formed. For the first time, photochemical smog was identified at Los Angeles in the year 1940. So, when the air is full of volatile organic compounds and consists of nitric oxide, then in the presence of sunlight, they combine and results in the formation of ozone, nitric oxide, nitric acid and other organics. This mixture is called as the photochemical smog. Based on the physical state, Air pollutants can be classified into two types, namely gaseous pollutants, aerosols. Gaseous pollutants means they are present in the gaseous state and include carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, oxides of sulfur, oxides of nitrogen, H2S, freon, etc. Aerosols means the dispersion of solid and liquid fine droplets in the air. They include dust, smoke and fog. Let us discuss what are the major causes for air pollution. The major cause is transportation and its contribution is 75%. So, due to transportation, it releases dangerous carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, oxides of nitrogen, sulfur dioxide, hydrocarbons into the air. Second major contribution is because of the industries. Due to industries, the carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, H3S, chlorine gas levels in the air will be increased. And other causes include deforestation, agricultural activities and the presence of radioactive materials. And because of the air pollution, there will be several effects on human beings, animals and building materials. Let us see what are the effects of air pollution on human beings. If the air consists of oxides of sulfur, in particular sulfur dioxide, it is responsible for asthma, bronchitis, eye irritation. 
If the air consists of oxides of nitrogen, it is responsible for respiratory illness. If the air consists of carbon monoxide, its target is hemoglobin. So let us see the functioning of hemoglobin. Initially, hemoglobin combines with oxygen, results in the formation of unstable oxyhemoglobin and it will be carried to the cell. At the cell, it undergoes dissociation and supplies the oxygen. But whenever carbon monoxide is available in the air, this hemoglobin is having greater affinity towards the carbon monoxide and thus results in the formation of carboxyhemoglobin and leaves oxygen. With the result, the supply of oxygen to each and every cell will be stopped. This is the toxicity of carbon monoxide. So, it reduces the supply of the oxygen in the biological system. Sometimes if the concentration of carbon monoxide is too high, it may lead to the death of the person. Pan, peroxyacetyl nitrogen, nitrate. So, pan means peroxyacetyl nitrate. So, it causes irritation of skin, nose, eye and throat. So, when we consider the workers of coal mines, it causes black lung disease. Asbestos workers will suffer from pulmonary fibrosis. That means they suffer from a lung disease. Stone crushers will suffer from silicosis. People working at arsenic will be exposed to more amounts of arsenic dust and it causes skin cancer. So, whenever people exposed to excess of hydrocarbons, it causes respiratory diseases. Coming to the effects on animals and plants, if fluorine is present in excess, it causes loss in weight and diarrhea. Lead causes loss of appetite. Arsenic causes loss of appetite. Sometimes it may lead to the death. If oxides of nitrogen are present, then it causes bleaching of leaves of the plants. If nitrogen oxide is present, it causes the reduced fruit production. In this way, especially arsenic, asbestos are dangerous. So, coming to the effects on material, especially if the air consists of carbon dioxide or sulfides of oxides of sulfur, it causes acid rain and responsible for the decrease of the strength of the building materials. Let us see what are the general effects of air pollution. There are three general effects of air pollution including greenhouse effect, ozone depletion and acid rain. Initially moving to the greenhouse effect, it is also called as global warming. Global warming means there will be increase in the temperature of the atmosphere. That is nothing but global warming. The gases responsible for the greenhouse effect are called as greenhouse gases. The major contributing greenhouse gas is carbon dioxide. Second one is methane. Third one is chlorofluorocarbons. Other in, others include ozone, oxides of nitrogen and water vapor. Coming to the depletion of ozone layer. Ozone layer depletion, depletion means there will be some decrease in the concentration of the ozone which is present in the stratosphere because of the chemicals. So, especially chlorofluorocarbons, nitric oxide, chlorine, methane, carbon dioxide are responsible for the depletion of ozone layer. So, whenever nitric oxide is present, it directly reacts with the ozone. Similarly, chlorofluorocarbons also directly react with the ozone and thus there will be decrease in the concentration of the ozone in the stratosphere and that is nothing but ozone layer depletion. Because of the ozone layer depletion, it causes skin cancer, cataract, there will be some increase in the temperature, even the photosynthesis in plants will be decreased.
coming to the third adverse effect that is acid rain if the ph of the rain water is less than 5.5 it is called as the acid rain so acid rain is due to the presence of excessive acids in the rain water so whenever if the atmosphere consists of oxides of nitrogen and sulfur that means nox and sox they are responsible for the formation of sulfuric acid and nitric acid in the atmosphere they combines with the rain water and reaches the earth in the form of acid rain coming to the effects of acid rain it causes decrease in the fertility of the soil aquatic life will be affected even the life of the building material will be affected so taj mahal is affected by acid rain coming to the deforestation deforestation means the massive destruction of the forest by humans is called as deforestation the main reasons are shifting cultivation mining quarrying overgrazing construction of the dams and forest fires coming to the effects of deforestation it causes soil erosion there will be loss of food chain expansion of deserts takes place it is also responsible for the global warming it is also responsible for the frequent floods these are the adverse effects of deforestation let us discuss about the energy resources coming to the types of energy resources they can be classified into two types one being non renewable energy resources and the second one is renewable energy resources non renewable is also called as conventional energy resources they include coal petroleum and natural gas renewable energy resources are also called as Conven non conventional energy resources they include solar energy wind energy geothermal energy hydro power ocean thermal energy and biogas coming to the biodiversity biodiversity means the diversity of life which includes the full range of variety and variability within and among the living organisms is called as biodiversity that means it includes various varieties of flora and fauna flora means different types of flower plant kingdom fauna means animal kingdom so biodiversity includes both plant kingdom and animal kingdom there should be variety and variability so there are several threats to the biodiversity especially they include natural factors such as floods volcanoes habitat loss because of the deforestation there will be habitat loss hunting of the animals climatic changes these are the major threats to biodiversity finally we will discuss about the water pollution water pollution means it is also due to the presence of excessive unwanted substances in the water body which affects physical chemical and biological properties of the water so due to the presence of unwanted substances in the water bodies what happens the physical chemical and biological properties of the water will be affected and thereby causing the decreased use of the water both for the domestic purpose and also industrial purpose coming to the major causes of water pollution faulty drainage system industrial discharges agriculture practices that means use of excessive fertilizers pesticides biological pollution and hygienic practices these are the major causes for the water pollution coming to the effects of water pollution it is mainly responsible for the water borne diseases like typhoid cholera jaundice and diarrhea if at all nitrates are present in the water body it causes blue baby syndrome that means the supply of oxygen will be decreased so the presence of mercury causes minamata disease for the first time it is found at minamata bay and hence it is called as the minamata disease which is a chest disease presence of lead causes anemia vomiting presence of arsenic causes lung cancer liver damage if cadmium is present it is responsible for the bone deformation and also responsible for the hypertension 
so coming to the effects on agriculture definitely the soil fertility decreases this is all about the air pollution water pollution and the other factors if you like the video don't forget to like share and subscribe thanks for watching have a nice day